My name's Terry Lewis and for 20 years I've helped organisations manage their cybersecurity posture, everything from health tech, med tech, AI tech, I've done this also for larger organisations, Accenture, KPMG, and I've also worked with smaller boutique penetration testing firms. So what I'm going to show you today is what goes into a standard external penetration test that for IP addresses that face raw or dirty internet. And to do this, I'm going to be using one of our own products, RoboShadow, which is completely free for everyone to use. So you can go ahead, log into the platform and run these sorts of tests yourself. So um, just quickly from a demonstration, perspective once you've logged in just click on the vulnerability scanner and then that is going to take you through to uh, a page that looks like this it won't have some uh, so much data in uh, if you've logged in for the first time um, and if you're already a RoboShadow user you can add agent networks into your favorites or you can just add all of your external IP addresses into your favorites I'll show you here what we can kick off just go through select a load of IP addresses uh, and then se select scan selected um, and then you are greeted with this screen. So what this is basically saying is do you want to do the top 1000 ports or 65, 000, uh, 65k ports? And what this basically means is that the IP address that you're scanning, everyone by now should know that what an IP address is, but within an IP address you get 65,535 channels which are called ports and all hackers are going to do is try and open a connection very quickly with each of those channels or ports um, just to see which one is open once it is open, they've discovered something to be open that's when they'll start going to town to try and work out how to exploit that so it's very common that cybersecurity tech will just say let's do the top 1000 ports to be quick but for good order once you've done your thousand ports report you should do a 65k run just for good order to make sure that you've got Got the full length and break but it will take a couple of hours because there's a lot more ports um, uh, uh, to, to discover there so so I'm going to go ahead and kick this off and you can see that these are all kicked off in the background uh, what I'll do is I will go back to one that I have prepared earlier um, I'm just going to download the report for that quickly just so we've got that in the background I'll come back to that in a second and then I'll click into that this is just giving you the splash page of what's been completed and what the total results are but let's just go to an individual scam uh, just so that I can give you a bit more um, meat around the bone of what goes into to one of these tests. So as you can see here, these ports or these channels uh, are, are all, these are the ones that the tech has discovered to be open. And here it's found some banners where it's guessed or knows what software is running behind these banners. And it's found out that it believes that these CVEs or vulnerabilities, which I'll come back to in a second, um, are available on these ports. So as you can see, we'll look at this one for an example. Let's use this one as an example. So this is saying, so this is, it's found port 80, which is a, a regular web port. And this particular vulnerability, let's have a little look here, is basically saying that there's a vulnerability known for the open SSL stack. So as you can see here, you've got a, a open SSL running. And then if you just click here, you can go to the MITRE website. So MITRE is the global uh, platform that manages all of the vulnerabilities in the Western world. It is run by the US, but all of the Western world can contribute to that. These are the guys that manage on behalf of all of the software vendors and then release the information about what vulnerabilities have come out so that everyone can stand a chance to patch them. So it will say a lot more information about the vulnerabilities. Unfortunately, sometimes it actually tells you how to exploit the vulnerabilities, um, uh, which I think sometimes the bad guys can use this uh, these platforms to actually learn how to, to hack the vulnerabilities but that is probably uh, a debate uh, for another day but the CVE vulnerabilities that is the main constituent parts that goes into any external penetration test for that faces raw or, or, or dirty internet so first of all we need to know what ports that are open and then we will scan for banners to understand can we guess what software is running behind those ports effectively and do a bit of digital fingerprinting once we think we know what might be running behind those ports we run it against the CVE database to understand uh, a bit more about that vulnerability. So the CVE database is pretty much the constituent parts of every single uh, penetration testing piece of software uh, on the planet. Rapid7, Nessus, uh, Microsoft Security Center use it, Amazon Inspector, the core vulnerability sort of assessment within Amazon uses the CVE database. It is penetration testing or vulnerability assessment and you can't really have a certifiable vulnerability uh, report unless you've got details or it's been run against the CVE database. So what I'll do is I'll use one of the reports this gets emailed out after a scan, but as you can see, you can download it as well. 
I'll come see if I can find just an easy example here. Okay, so an example here, obviously all the IP addresses are blurred out for obvious reasons. So this uh, IP address has been seen to have these ports open. So what do you do if you've got ports or vulnerabilities? So if you have ports open, it's not the end of the world, but the trick is, is to have as little ports open as possible. And if you do have ports, it should be uh, running stuff under SSL. So, you know, 443 is a good one to have open because there's usually an SSL uh, uh, channel running behind that. So if you have ports open, find a way of getting them closed down. If you can close them down, you just close them down on your router effectively. But if you really have to have ports open in the enterprise, if you've got inbound traffic into data centers or offices, you may need to have ports open. If you are at home and you've got ports open, it may be one of your devices, UPnP or Xbox or something like that, which has opened up an external channel on your firewall and that should be closed down if you do have to have ports open it's always better to have some kind of proxy tech that is you know like web application firewalls and feel free to reach out to me in the comments if you want some uh, more specifics around that if you have to have ports open they should be fairly fortified and that's the problem not everyone that has ports open have got fortified tech running uh, behind those ports so so if we can keep ports closed let's close them down uh, but from a uh, if you've got vulnerabilities so as you can see this particular um, uh, uh, banner that's come back has been known to have all of these vulnerabilities so you need to upgrade that tech so you need to patch that and get that upgraded as soon as possible usually just doing an in place patch and upgrade will fix most things not everything but but will fix most things because the other thing that i've also um, uh, put within the platform as you can see that we have both shodan and mmap so different sources so mmap is that i'll probably go back to the software just to demonstrate this so mmap is the global open source tool that all a lot of the big pieces of cybersecurity penetration testing or vulnerability assessment tech will use it is the gold standard and it's used absolutely everywhere the reason that you want something like mmap or as good as mmap is that what you have to what happens when you're trying to scan all of these 65,000 ports sometimes either your router that you're scanning from or the target gets a bit tired or a little bit overloaded what nmap will do without boring you with the details will go down the osi layer and detect a packet level if you're having packet loss if nmap detects that you're having packet loss it will slow down the scanner to make sure you've got more chance of ports being open so our view is is that you should take multiple sources and we we, we we have our own Robo Shadow, MMAP, and then we've also got Shodan in here as well. But MMAP is needs to be the gold standard. It's got that tech in there which slows itself down if it realizes that it's moving too fast effectively. And the other thing that we have in here is also uh, the Shodan data. Um, Shodan is really important. If you don't know, it's the hacker search engine. I believe this, these were Harvard guys in the US or that set this up, but this will just scan legally everyone's IP addresses um, and then tell everyone the whole world um, what is open and what vulnerabilities are available um, um, on that particular IP address. Now I think they do this thinking that they're doing the world some good um, and you know nation states will have the same tech and they will be doing the same and criminal underworlds will be doing the same but the problem with I find with Shodan is that you can just buy it, anyone can access the API and if a new vulnerability comes out you can just search anyone using this software yes here's a list of 500 known external IP addresses uh, that have got this vulnerability and definitely 100% organized crime gangs are using this service um, to check out on new vulnerabilities and keep ahead of the curve um, but it's really important this is the global one-stop shop for it is the Google of people's IP addresses and what vulnerabilities are running behind that in every single external penetration test we think it's important to send back to the user what is running behind that IP or what does the world know what's running behind that IP address uh, and Shodan is uh, the uh, platform of choice to be able to do that so um, so please like and subscribe um, uh, if this video has been useful, we will definitely put out more. Please do feel free to go ahead, go to RoboShadow, uh, down, log in, sign up. It's very, very quick. Click on the vulnerability scanner, and then from there, you can just it will show you also what your IP address is. You can just do a quick scan of your own IP address. If you are curious, is, is there anything open on your own, either home IP address or work IP address, feel free to go ahead, log into the platform, and have a go yourself. If you do have any questions, please come back to us in uh, and, and put some comments in the video uh, for whatever platform this has been released on and we will endeavor to get back to you very quickly so thanks ever so much for watching